Hi, welcome to Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to show you how to create the Fall Maple Leaves artwork that I did. This is a great beginner project because it only uses one burn stroke, pull away strokes. Now you can use this to decorate picture frames, cutting board, all kinds of stuff, so it's a very adaptable project. Well, let's get started. Arrange and transfer. Begin by arranging your leaves on the surface you'll be burning on. I am burning on a piece of plywood, but this can be done on just about anything, like a picture frame, a cutting board, a gift box, etc. The leaves I'm using are nothing more than computer printouts on standard copier paper. I cut out each leaf using an X-Acto knife. You can use actual leaves, store-bought leaves, stencils, rubber stamps, etc. for this process. Once you have a layout that you like, then trace around each leaf with a graphite pencil. Afterwards, draw in the major vein lines for the leaf. The red circles are marking spots where two leaves overlap. Decide which leaf is the top one and erase the bottom one. I am using a mechanical eraser because it keeps a fine point, but any eraser will work. Draw in any needed lines that were accidentally erased. Here's how my board looks after I was done. The background. Use a writer pen tip and burn over the trace lines. Once you are done, rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. I do not have that step on video. Switch to the shader of your choice and burn darkly along the edges of the background. Next, burn pull-away strokes along the edges. Start the stroke on the edge and pull it downward or towards yourself. Start a new stroke adjacent to or slightly overlapping the last stroke. To darken up a burn result, just re-burn over the area using the same pull-away burn strokes. By first burning darkly along the edge of each area, you ensure that the edges will be crisp and clean. Or to put it another way, when you're burning the pull-away strokes, if you don't place the pen tip perfectly on the edge, any resulting gaps won't show. Rotate the board as needed so you can burn in a direction that allows you to pull the pen tip downward or towards yourself. I will refer to this as the convenient direction from here on. The convenient direction is easier to do and provides greater control over the burn stroke. Pull away strokes start darker than they end. Since we are burning the strokes in all of the convenient directions, we will end up with areas that have lighter centers than their edges at least for the larger areas. Now if you prefer, you can re-burn over the center of those areas and darken them up. Maple Leaf Style 1 Our first maple leaf is a very basic style. We are going to burn pull-away strokes along the vein lines. Start each stroke on the vein line and pull the pen tip towards the outer edge of the leaf. Allow the stroke to gently curve. The burn stroke should stop a little ways before reaching the edge of the leaf. We are using the same burn stroke that we used on the background. The difference is that we are burning longer strokes, they are lighter in color, and we are allowing individual burn strokes to be noticed. In fact, I recommend burning some darker burn strokes here and there for variety and to add interest to the leaf. Like before, 
To darken up the color, just reburn over the area using the same pull away burn stroke. It is completely up to you on how dark you burn your leaf. It is also up to you on how dark you make your vein lines. You have control over how much of a curve your burn strokes have and the color variety of your burn strokes. Also, remember to rotate the board as needed to make burning the most comfortable it can be for you. Here's how the leaf looked once I was done. Maple Leaf Style 2 With the second style, we are adding more vein lines. I added a line from the main vein to each of the leaf points. A green arrow is marking a point on the leaf. I am using the razor edge of the shader to burn in the lines, but you can use a writer pen tip instead. In fact, a writer pen tip would probably be easier and more precise. Now burn pull-away strokes along the vein lines. Like before, place the pen tip on a vein line and then pull the pin tip towards the opposite side of the leaf. Also, keep the stroke length proportional to the area. At the leaf tip and between the veins, use a shorter burn stroke. Where space allows, increase the length of your burn stroke. Make sure to burn carefully in areas of leaf overlap. My plan with the leaves was to have pale edges on them so that it contrasted with the background. Also, in areas of overlap, I made the top leaf lighter in color than the bottom leaf. Again, this was done for contrast and to help each leaf stand out. Rotate the board as needed to make burning comfortable and easy as possible. The same rules or guidelines that we used on the first leaf apply to this one. To darken up areas, re-burn over them using the same pull-away burn stroke. Slightly overlapping burn strokes will produce a smoother looking burn area. Gently curve your burn strokes. Burn a variety of different colored burn strokes to give the leaf visual interest. Something new to this leaf is whether or not you want to burn pull-away strokes on both sides of the side veins. You can just burn along the left or top sides. Experiment and see what you think looks best. After all, this is your artwork, so create something that is pleasing looking to you. Here is how the leaf looked once I was done. Color Pencil Begin with a light yellow color and apply it around the edges of the leaves. I am using the Polychromos Cadmium Yellow. I am not applying a heavy layer of color as I want to make sure that the wood burning shows through. Rub over the leaves with a blender of your choice to even out the color and smooth out pencil marks. Now use a reddish brown color and apply it over the center of the leaves where the wood burning is more prevalent. I am using Sanguine by Polychromos. With the bottom or underlying leaves, I applied the color over the entire leaf. This helps push the leaf into the background and provides contrast for the top leaves, which I plan to be brighter in color. Once again, use a blender of your choice and rub over the leaves to smooth out the color. The next color I used was Dark Chrome Yellow by Polychromos. This was applied over the entire leaf surface. And of course, once you're done coloring, rub over the color to blend it out. The Pompeian Red by Polychromos was applied over the vein lines on the top leaves. The color was applied over the entire surface of the bottom leaves. This provides contrast and adds depth to the leaves. 
Afterwards, rub over the leaves with a blender to smooth out the color. Pale geranium lake was applied just over the burn marks around the vein lines. Now keep in mind that you can use the colors that you like. If you like to paint, use watercolors or thin down acrylic paints to color your leaves. Dark cadmium orange was applied to just two leaves. I didn't want all of the leaves to be the same. I applied deep scarlet red by polychromos to the same two leaves that got the application of the dark cadmium orange. I really like the contrast that it is providing against that yellow leaf on top. Plus, I just like the color variety. The very last thing that I did was apply a little more dark cadmium orange to the two bottommost leaves. Here's how the leaves looked after I finished with the colored pencil. Airbrush With the airbrush, I need a piece of frisket or masking film to cover the board. Once it's on the board, it is important to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles. Then, I use an X-Acto knife and cut around the edges of all of the leaves that are on the board. The goal is to apply just enough pressure to cut through the film without cutting into the board. I'm checking my cut results and it's looking good. I've removed the frisket film from two leaves on the board, and now I'm ready to start spraying color. I start with my lightest colors first, so in this case, bright yellow. Since the adjacent leaves are still covered with frisket film, I don't have to worry about overspray. Every time I switch colors, I clean out the old color by flushing the brush with water. The scrap paper is used to make sure the old color is gone and the new color is flowing properly. What I like about airbrushing color is that I don't have to use a paintbrush. The color is dry almost instantly and the color is very smooth looking. The transparent colors that I am using can be layered up and the pyography still shows through. Once I am done spraying, I make sure the leaves are dry, and then I replace the frisket film. This is something that I dislike about airbrushing. Now I can remove the frisket from another leaf and start spraying color onto the newly exposed leaf. As I spray on color, I am making sure to alter how the color is applied. Some colors are sprayed only along the edges, others in the center of the leaf, some over the entire leaf. Some leaves are brighter than others. Basically, I want each leaf to be unique. I may not use all of the colors on each leaf. Again, this is done to add more variety. Once I'm done spraying, all of the frisket film gets removed from the board. I sprayed some burnt umber over the lower leaves to tone down the color. Even though the color is opaque, a few light layers still look transparent. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found the information informative and easy to follow along. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of this tutorial, and I also have a lot of other written tutorials and lots of free patterns that you can download. I'll put a link to my website in the description below. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week.